but they already entered in. So I didn't know what to do. So when I, when I went in, I was just thinking like, I'll try and you know, get them out, but I couldn't. Uh, so I waited for some time and uh, then I just pulled, pulled the shutter down and I left, some, left a little gap on the right hand side. And on the other side, I, um, I covered with like sort of a log of wood. And, um, and I thought of like, next thought was like, uh, I'll go and buy poison, rat poison. So it was on a Monday, I bought this uh, rat poison. And, um, and the coming Saturday, I did the same thing. I went to my garage and um, I took the poison with me. And um, I, I broke the box, like I made a small hole and uh, I left some poison on the ground. And, uh, and I left the entire box on the shelf. But before that, and during that week, we had a tough time, you know, we, uh, the, the rats were like, you know, uh, they were jumping on the rooftop. So we had like, uh, at 12, 1 o'clock, I could hear the sounds on the rooftop. So this happened on, on Saturday, this, this coming like uh, on, the 12th of, uh, on the 12th September, Saturday, I, I left this poison in the garage and I locked the, and I prayed, it's just a small prayer, like I just said, uh, I rebuked the rats in uh, Jesus' name, and that's it. And then I left the garage, and I, and I decided, like, next week, I will check, you know. So when I went back to the garage, I found that uh, the rats had eaten the poison. They have eaten whatever I left on the floor, as well as on the shelf. And after that, we didn't hear any sound of the rats. So I give praise and thanks to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you. Vic, I would like to give a testimony. Yeah, Anita, go ahead. Yeah. I would like to praise and thank God for bringing my sister Natasha, her husband Headley, Dwayne and Adrian safely back home and curing them from COVID. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank and you, I Jesus. Also want to, yeah, and I also want to thank God and give praises to him for my successful cataract operation during this time of COVID. Praise God. Praise and thank God. Thank you, Jesus. So we had like Hello, hello. Yeah, 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 good. Yeah. Uh, I would like to thank and praise the Lord for all that He has done for us and always been there for us. I had a gynec issue in March and was asked to do blood test ultrasounds, and last month were asked to do a DNC. All these tests and procedures for me and waiting for the results may be very stressful. I would like to thank the Lord for this prayer group through which I learned how to depend totally on the Lord, read the Bible, and claim the scriptures. Yes. The scriptures that I claim right through were Isaiah 53.5. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. And 1 Corinthians 12, 27. I am the body of Christ. Satan, you have no power, no place in me. It was a month since I did the DNC and got the results today. I met the doctor and she said all my tests were clear. I want to thank and praise the Lord for all thank that you. he has done. Thank you, Jesus. Praise thank you, Jesus. Brother Vivek, I would like to share a testimony. Yeah. On Sunday, I had written a letter to my friend and email Katrina in, at, in Sweden, who lives in Sweden. Just now, when the prayers were going on, I still kept her in prayer. And suddenly she emailed me back saying that she has been only detected for a bacterial uh, infection and not COVID. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I also also like to thank the Lord for one of my friends, uh, a non-Catholic friend uh, whose wife was, was in the 
was in the hospital in Mumbai. And we are surprised that she got COVID and, you know, she was uh, detected with uh, fibrosis of the lungs and a very young lady. And uh, so we kept uh, me and Priya both prayed for her all the time. We were praying and asking the Lord for his mercy and uh, just got to know that she's out of the danger zone. Uh, doctors have given only 10% chance of living and now she's out of the danger zone and towards recovery. She's still in hospital. We're still keeping her in prayer, but I want to give thanks and praise to our loving Jesus for getting her out of the danger zone. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> I would like to say praise and thank you to the Lord Jesus for the beautiful rain that he is going to send this land. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. I have a testimony regarding our prayer group. As we always say, a seed was sown by Brother Johnson, taken care by Brother Vivek. But it's always and every day watered and nurtured by Brother Russell, where every morning we wake up to pray in tongues and hear the beautiful words that Brother Russell has to sing. It makes, it helps us uh, go through our day so well. And not only us, but it also helps people in India who really miss um, when the messages are not put on time. So I'd like to say thank you to the Holy Spirit for helping Rus Brother Russell, teaching us and praying for every situation in our life. Thank you. Amen. I just want to give a testimony about uh, this uh, workplace harassment. I had a problem with this friend of mine who was, we were working together and he used to always, uh, always try and say something or the other or, or try and come in my way. And, uh, and I used to get scared of him because he was quite tall and hefty and all. And, and he always tried to, you know, always uh, try and play, you know, play the fool with, you know, by, by talking to other friends and saying something or the other. So I just ignored him. I always used to ignore him. So one day I got very angry at him and he, he started like act, acting funny in the office. And um, so I called up my boss and I told, I, I told my boss that, you know, this, I just want to be transferred uh, to another place. So he says, okay, just wait. And then um, again, he called me back saying that you stay back and I will transfer this guy. So when he transferred this guy, after two days, this guy was sacked. I give praise and thanks to God. Thank you, Jesus. So, Vivek? Yeah, I need to. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just a small one, just like to thank um, the Lord that, uh, you know, all these angels and saints that uh, we said, now we have a uh, full, there, it's real, there, there is presence I like to, uh, I learn every day just praying, but I, I know that they're presence is like you're talking to some someone real it's get it gets real every day and now just just little things and i'm so much i'm so much happy and uh every day there's little uh new, new things um uh, even though there's been sort of like a little bit of uh you know that when they said that the you go you go with the lord and then the devil comes after you but i have no sort of like kind of fear now um because I feel confident that um, the word of God is always there, and that you just speak out the the right uh, the the right words at the right time at the end at, at the non right uh, situations, and I yeah, feel very much confident. And just little things, we used to have our four four day week for our work, and now uh, I think today they just announced that they're putting on you know like a four week. Uh, 
uh, work for five days. So, you know, all, all things are looking uh, pretty good and I feel blessed with all the angels and saints in, uh, working in my life. Yeah, praise God. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Okay, anyone else? So we can start. <clears throat> Okay, praise God. Let's start the teaching for today because we have a lot to cover. And uh, today's teaching is the most powerful one. If we can understand this, please, for people taking notes, uh, it's important that we understand this teaching because this can change our life. And this is very important uh, to know how powerful the blood of the Lamb is. Okay. So, just to put this in context, See, Christians are involved in a tremendous conflict that spans the whole universe from heaven to earth. Now, there's always a battle taking place, a spiritual warfare or a battle. And it's between God and the forces of good on one hand. So there's God and his angels on one hand. And there is Satan and the forces of evil on the other hand. So this is always a conflict. That's why if you look at certain scriptures, it clearly says in Ephesians 6, 12, that we are not fighting. You know, we're not fighting, uh, you know, flesh and blood, but the principalities and powers and darkness in the heavenly realms. So we have to understand that the devil is real and this is absolute real. So we need to know that we have to have an armor at all times. And so that's why the fight takes place in the spirit realm all the time. Now, many of us are not open to understanding the word of God. And that's why what we learn needs to be practiced. And that's why we need to read the word of God so that the word of God gets and seeps inside us so that we can hold strong to our testimony of the scriptures. So, so the battle is a spiritual warfare that takes place all the time. Now, remember the devil was and is, is actually an angel. Okay. He was an angel and he was thrown with one third of the angels because he rebelled against God and set up our rival kingdom. Okay. Uh, in the book of Isaiah chapter 14, you can read about how he was thrown out from there and how, you know, he tried, he always says, I, there were five eyes, I will be greater than God. I will go more than him. I will. So it's all about pride and being selfish about everything. Uh, <clears throat> so the scripture picks him, pictures the devil in different formats. One as a dragon, sometimes as a serpent, a murderer, a liar and a thief. Satan opposes God and his very purpose and God's people. And he hates God's creation that is man. And this is what we need to know. That we have a real enemy who is not in flesh and blood, but a spiritual enemy that is at force all the time. So, and we know in John 10.10 10, that his only object is to steal, kill and destroy. First, he steals you of your peace, your joy, your happiness by spreading lies in you. You always get lies. And remember, it's, it's very, today's very gospel, a kingdom that is divided amongst itself, okay, will always fall. So Jesus clearly says, you know, if it's in today's gospel, that, that if Satan has his kingdom divided amongst himself, then his kingdom has to fall. And the best way for the devil to do it, he's been doing it all the time, is to start in our own houses, where the husband and the wife itself are not, you know, in agreement. There is fights taking place everywhere. And he loves it because that's the only way he can, you know, uh, destroy. So it's everywhere. It is divide and rule, you know, rather than trying to create the very antidote, which is unity. So Christ is all about unity. And he says, we are the body of Christ. That's why the unity is so important to have fellowship and have that unity together. So the good news of the gospel is that Jesus Christ died on the cross. But we need to understand what happened on that cross. And that's why today the blood of the Lamb. Okay, so what happened on the cross? What was the main thing that happened? The first thing that happened is Jesus made it possible for us to obtain forgiveness of past sins. Okay, this is very, very critical. Okay, so our past sins can be forgiven, okay, through Jesus. And secondly, he made it possible for us to receive God's righteousness by faith without having to observe the law. Now, if you look at the Old Testament, go to Exodus and, you know, and if you read, 
everyone had to follow a law. There was a law. You had to do this. If you don't do this, there was a curse of God on you. So you had to live that holy life. You had to offer a sacrifice. There was a blood offering always done. Okay. If you read uh, the book of Hebrews chapter nine, it talks about, you know, the holy of holies. Okay. It talks of the sanctuary first. Okay. It talks about the tabernacle, the shoe bread and the very sanctuary. And then talks about an ordinary, the priest going in. And then the holy of holies, only the, the high priest could go in once a year to go and make an offering. Now, remember one thing, we don't have any offering. We don't have any of these things because the Christ paid the price in full on that cross. We take it for granted that it's all good. It's all happening. But we need to know that Jesus is the way to the Father. That's why when we pray, we can go confidently to Abba Father in the, in, with using Jesus and, and say, Abba Father, in the name of Jesus, I make this prayer through Jesus Christ, your, my Lord and Savior. And your prayer is straight in the Holy of Holies. Let our needs be known to the Father in heaven through Jesus. And our Father in heaven hears prayers. And he wants us to pray. And he wants us to ask. And wants us to expect that his prayer will be answered. All he talks about is repentance. So what we hear from here is uh, the biggest weapon that Satan uses. Okay, And that was the weapon that was destroyed on the cross, which is guilt. He makes you guilty of what you do. Whereas the Holy Spirit will always try to let you know about the sin you commit. And rather than guilt, he will try to change your attitude towards it. Ask for repentance, ask for forgiveness. Whereas the devil talks about guilt. You did this, you will punish, God will not love you. And he creates this kind of story in your mind and you live in that story. So that's how fear is, is developed. But remember one thing. Let us understand through this teaching the different parts that we are going to go through. The first one, the first part is the spiritual weapon that we have in our hand through the blood of Jesus. So uh, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish yeah, till, your, uh, till five. So it clearly says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Okay, this is very, very important. So any stronghold in our life, any area where the devil has taken hold of our life, we have a very powerful weapon. Okay. And so the, the weapons that God has given us has supplied, as basically says, uh, it's very powerful through God. Okay. As we operate to the web, uh, weapon, it's very clear that we should have dependence on God and his word. So here it clearly says, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now, anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God is not from God. So every thought, it also, every thought that comes in that is not in obedience to Christ is thought into captive, you know, captivity. So it holds that thought and brings it into obedience of Christ. Now, this is very important because if you have the word of God in you, you can profess, you can confess the word of God and what we proclaim through the scriptures is speaking our faith. We speak our faith and it's faith alone that can, you know, we cannot please God unless we have faith. We got to believe that he exists. So for everything that we need to know that God is real and he exists and his word is real, so if we know these two things, that when we are speaking God's word, we know that when he has given us the authority, we just do what he tells us. Just quite, we just obey. So having the one thing that we need to know very clearly is that we have to have faith and believe God exists. Uh, Savi, can you take me to Hebrews 11, uh, chapter 6, uh, verse 6, please?
but without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to god must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him okay so this is very very clear so if you don't have faith and do not believe that god is existing then then it really means nothing to you the word of god it's just like a literature book because it means nothing but with faith comes faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so now people say how do i build up my faith i have all the faith in the world but very importantly you cannot get the faith which christ wants you to get unless and until you read his word because jesus is the word of god okay so we know it very clearly in romans 10 17 if you just check romans 10 17 so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so the faith comes by hearing there are two hearings remember the first hearing is when you read the word of god and it seeps into your heart heart is your spirit man spirit is where faith is born okay so that's where the word of god goes in okay and the second hearing is when the holy spirit prompts that scripture to us in our life and makes it alive and real so faith cannot come unless and until you have the word of god in your heart there's no other way of getting faith so remember one thing if someone says no if you pray you will get faith yeah prayer is important but remember one thing the word of god clearly says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god okay and we need to renew our minds with the word of god that's what romans uh, 12 1 and 2 clearly tells us that we need to you know get our minds renewed and transformed by the word of god So let's understand one thing. So what happens now? Can can you take me back to to Corinthians ten four five? This is a very important topic. So I'm going to be dividing it into different, uh, you know, different aspects. So we'll go with first with the spiritual weapons, and then go through the entire process of the blood. Okay. So we got this very clear, and we clearly know that our even our thoughts need to be captive to what God's word is. But if we do not have the word of God inside us, how do we get our thoughts into captivity to the word of God? Many times you notice with the little things when you open the Bible, Satan will quickly come and give you a call at that time. There'll be some distraction which he doesn't want you to read the word of God. He is happy with you attending prayer meetings, happy with you going to church, happy with you for everything else. But the moment you open the word of God, that's when he knows because if you speak that word of God. he gets defeated straight away because that's the way the lord jesus spoke he says it is written so if you do not know what is written how do you speak it so that's why he does not allow us to open the word of god that's why when we go to read the word of god let's call the holy spirit and ask him to bless us and fill us with his wisdom that's why james 1:5 says if any of you one any of you lack wisdom let him ask the father and he will bless you with wisdom okay and ungrudgingly remember it's a free gift anyone can ask for god's wisdom let's ask for god's wisdom amen, amen. now very importantly we understand this see we cannot be on the defensive when we are fighting satan okay and we need to know that the blood of jesus has taken all this on the cross okay so you cannot come back and say i'm so weak i'm so unworthy how can i fight because the devil always puts these thoughts in your mind okay he put so much of guilt in you at all times and he says hey you cannot you cannot pray this way you have sinned so much god does not like you he hates you so his main thing is his main weapon is guilt and he puts suggestions in the mind you know and he after you do something wrong he quickly comes and says hey what did you do see now god won't be happy with you you can't pray now you're finished so remember very importantly god clearly tells us that we can pray in any situation and we clearly understood that all the past sin of our life is taken over when we go to jesus christ ask for mercy and his forgiveness this is very important now let's go to another important scripture to understand if we go into a situation we all fall in the situation after we do something wrong and then the devil keeps on putting that guilt in front of us all the time now let's understand through the word of god how do we get by that okay take me to 1 corinthians chapter 1 27 28 a 
but God has chosen foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. Okay, so and the God base things of the world. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Twenty-seven, twenty-eight. You read uh, and the base thing. Read that. Read twenty-eight. Yeah. And the base things of the world, and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not, to bring to nothing, the things that are. Okay, so in his infinite wisdom, if you notice this scripture, what it says is, God has actually chosen the weak and unworthy people like us to overthrow the things that are, that is Satan's kingdom. Okay, so our confidence, remember, should not be in ourselves. That is very important. Okay, but in our weapons that God has given us to have. So let us understand what are our spiritual weapons, okay, that we have in our possession. Okay, now, very, very importantly, remember Revelations chapter 12, Verse 10 to 11 talks of the spiritual weapon that we have. Take me to Revelations chapter 12, verse 10 to 11. And can you take me to NIV, please? Do you have NIV there? Yeah, NIV, the first one. Yeah. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They triumph over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their life so much as to shrink from death. Okay, so the one thing that we clearly notice from this is they overcame him, okay, which is very, very, or they triumphed over him. It's nothing but they overcame him. Uh, who is him then? Savio, who is him? Satan. Correct. Satan is him, okay. They overcame him and you triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Now, here it's very, very clear that we need to understand. <clears throat> so, any believer, has an enemy which is invisible. Okay. And the weapons in the fight were always the blood of the lamb. Okay. And the word of their testimony. And in addition, if you notice, they did not love their lives so much as to shrink it. Okay. Even to death. So it very, very clearly says that they were totally committed to the battle, even to death. Okay. So if you understand this in a very simple language, which is very important for us to understand, is that we overcame Satan. When we testify personally to what the word of God says, the blood of Jesus does for us. So what the word of God says that the blood of Jesus does for us. When we use these three weapons, so there are three weapons here that he talks of. The blood of Jesus. The first one is the blood of lamb, is the blood of Jesus. Second one is the word of God. Okay, And the third one is our powerful testimony. When we make them effective, Okay, we need to know for this what the blood of Jesus talks about and what it does it say about, you know, what Jesus did for us on the cross. Now, I can take you to one scripture, but remember for if someone wants to go deeper into this, Hebrews chapter 9 talks about the entire blood covenant. We are done a teaching. If someone wants to actually go deeper into this and understand the blood of Jesus, we have a teaching called the blood covenant. Just check it on YouTube. It's there with the entire, uh, we did a very detailed study. But just for now, to get a little bit, let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 9. We'll take one scripture. And uh,
So then can you read verse 14? How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? So we got to serve the living God and the blood of Jesus totally clears us from rituals. Its conscience is basically the work of rituals, you know. So people have rituals in following God. God has done it all on the cross. He does not want another kind of ritual. Okay, like the Old Testament, people decided if we do this, then God will love us. But the Lord has, he said it is finished. So today we just go openly and confidently to the Father in heaven through Jesus and through his precious blood. Okay, so the blood of the Lamb, the whole Hebrews chapter 9 is about the blood of Jesus. So, okay. Uh, and if you notice, without the blood, there is absolutely no life. So blood is the most important part of the body. So the three weapons that we get here to understand is the first one is the blood of the lamb, the word of God. Okay, what the word has to say and your powerful testimony. When you profess with your lips and believe in your heart, that's when your testimony becomes powerful. That's why you got to speak it out. You can't fight an evil one in your mind. You have to speak the word and say, it is written. That's why I'm sure there are hundreds of you who are here, everyone who testifies. It is written, I am the body of Christ. Satan and sickness, you have no power and place in this body because this body belongs to Jesus. I command you to leave this body right now. And he has to obey because it clearly says in Philippians 2.9, the name Jesus is a name, at his name, every knee, even Satan bows. Every knee in heaven, on earth and in hell will bow to the name of Jesus. Now, if you know the blood of Jesus, how much more powerful it is when you say the blood of Jesus, you are upon me. Okay, let's go ahead and understand the second part, which is important. Now, this is a very, very important teaching. So please pay full attention to this whole teaching. The second part is the Passover lamb. Okay, let's go to 1 Peter 1, Peter 1, 18 to 19. So Jesus is compared to the Passover lamb and let's understand that. It's a lovely teaching. I love this. And uh, when I was preparing for the notes, I had to actually prepare three times for this. Um, very beautiful teaching on the blood of the, the blood of the lamb. Yeah. So go to 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 18 and 19. 18 and 19. Can you make it... Yeah, make it big, please. Get, take it on top so people can read. Yeah. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish, and without spot. So here he clearly says, you have been redeemed, okay, from that. You are redeemed by the blood of the lamb. So here it clearly shows you that, you know, we are bought with the precious blood of Jesus, a lamb without blemish or defect, okay? Now, if you notice here, Jesus is compared to the Passover lamb. Now, if you notice, and very, very important here, again, please pay attention to this, okay? Here, Jesus is compared to the Passover lamb. Now, if you notice in the old covenant, the blood of the Passover lamb was applied to the home of the Israelites. Okay. The father of each family killed the Passover lamb. Okay. And collected the blood in a basin. And it was transferred, transferred the blood from the basin to his home with a simple instrument. I'm sure what you remember the instrument. This was nothing but a little bunch of hyssop. H-Y-S-S-O-P. Hyssop. He dipped his hyssop in the blood and sprinkled it on his home. So the hyssop was essentially, uh, it was basically the blood remaining in the basin that gave no protection. But the use of the hyssop protected the family. It was not the blood that was collected in the basin, but using the hyssop, it was put on the, on the doorstep, on the house. Okay. Now, the hyssop there was 
the the power was the blood that was used on the hyssop that were made it powerful so that the angel of death that passed by would not kill the firstborn okay now this is very very important the hyssop here is our testimony okay when we testify about what jesus what the bible says that the blood of jesus has done this is like taking the blood from the same basin and sprinkling it over the place where it is needed so it is a place where we live okay you can always sprinkle the blood of jesus on the family on the children on the workplace so everywhere let the blood be on on your finances on your assets on every person in your life the blood of jesus has power okay remember it's like a hedge and that's where the devil says because of the hedge he cannot touch you and this is the power that we need to know that the blood of jesus is very 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 powerful okay i want to show you one scripture where satan says it's in the book of job chapter 1 verse 10 and let's take it and all of us need to know how powerful this blood blood is it because satan tells god that i cannot touch job because your hedge is on him the hedge of protection now the hedge of protection is the blood the blood of jesus is that very protection let's go to uh, job chapter 1 the first chapter of job 1 verse 10 have you not made a hedge around him around his household and around all that he has on every side you have left the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land okay so this is very clearly satan says have you not made a hedge around him this is the blood my friends remember this teaching tonight is very powerful in the spirit realm because when you take this precious blood and say lord i take your blood okay and we all need to know one day we do another teaching which is equally important is that we are spirit and we can go back in time because jesus christ is the alpha and the omega we can go in spirit and be actually watching that very act where jesus sacrificed his life for you and me to the 100% and we could actually be bathing under the blood of jesus how great is that if you know this truth that we are spirit and we can actually bathe ourselves with the blood of jesus all the time have that blood over us and the blood is going into our veins the blood of jesus his blood is becoming our blood his body is our body imagine the holiness of christ is in us and if the blood of jesus is there satan cannot come there that hedge is so strong he cannot touch it that's why use the blood at all times amen amen okay let's also go now to the another part of this teaching which is redemption and forgiveness now let's understand in ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace so here if you look at it in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace which we have have uh, he made to abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence now what does paul say here to the people in ephesians and what is he actually telling us is there are two things okay god provided for us by the blood of jesus the first one he clearly says is redemption and the second one he talks about is forgiveness of sins okay so redemption and forgiveness of sins now in order to make these provisions effective in our lives okay we have to make the testimony very real to us okay so we have to testify about what god has done for us in our life and the testimony to this very passage of scripture is in psalms 107 verse 2 
Psalms 107 verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the land of the Okay, can you read it again? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the land of the enemy. Okay, we'll make a, a bold declaration. You don't need to uh, unmute, but we repeat after Savio. Okay, repeat after me, Savio. Just one line, but we need to just use this very scripture so that we are redeemed. Okay, just say this boldly. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. From the hand of the enemy. From the hand of the enemy. Through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. And his precious blood. And his precious blood. Amen. Amen. Okay. So now it clearly says here, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. It doesn't say, say it in the mind, say so. So that's why we declare and say that I am redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Who's the enemy? Satan is the enemy. Okay. So now redeem means nothing but to buy back. So what we have done is we were once sinners. Okay. And this is, uh, this is so important because what really happens is we were sinners and Satan has a kind of a slave market for people who he puts down. Okay. We become slaves to sin. What's the meaning of slaves to sin is we, uh, we just cannot get out of that sin. We have become habitual to the sin and it's a kind of a slave market where Satan has bound each and every one. Okay. But it's because of Jesus Christ, we are there today redeemed by his precious blood and by his mercy. Okay. By his mercy. Okay, so let's understand one thing. Jesus walks into that slave market of Satan. That is where people are being drenched or people have been bound by sin. Sin basically is nothing but where Satan binds you with his, you know, binds you with guilt and you keep committing another sin because he keeps doing the same thing. Okay, so, so Jesus walks into Satan's slave market and buys us back out of the devil's possession with his own precious blood. This is what happened on the cross. Okay, so this redemption from the enemy is based upon the forgiveness of our sins. Now, to make Jesus Christ's redemption and forgiveness effective in our lives, okay, we must use our own personal testimony. Okay, and let's repeat this uh, testimony that we do. Okay, again, let's say this. Some you repeat after me and don't unmute, but let's let's say this boldly so that we are out of the grips of Satan and has no authority over us. This is what we need to do all the time. Okay. Through the blood of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus. All my sins are forgiven. All my sins are forgiven. Through the blood of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus. I have been redeemed out of the hands of Satan. I have been redeemed out of the hands of Satan. Amen. Amen. Now, this is our testimony. Yes. Remember this. This is our testimony. Now, this is that hyssop that transfers the power of the blood of Jesus from the realm of the potential into the daily living of our life. When we make this testimony and say exactly what I said, through the blood of Jesus, all my sins are forgiven. Remember on the cross, every sin was taken away. So Satan cannot have you in the job market, in the slave market. What is a slave market? Where you're bound by that sin and you're become a slave to that sin. Okay. So a person who is a slave to the sin cannot get out of the sin. He wants to get out of it, but just cannot get out of it. That's a slave. Okay. You become slave. So he, the binding of the slave because of the blood of Jesus, it breaks that bind. And you, the Lord takes you out of that very thing. Okay. So through the blood of Jesus, all my sins are forgiven. And through the blood of Jesus, I have been redeemed out of the hand of Satan. This is that hedge we talk about where God has put that hedge of the blood of Jesus. Put this on your work. Put this on your colleagues. Put this on your own house, your wife, your husband, children, workplace, wherever the blood can be applied on. on when you're driving to work, coming back, your travel, let the blood of Jesus be your hedge and protection. Let the evil one have no power and place because he can't touch you. Because the moment he touches you, 
he would get an electric shock because the blood of Jesus is that very hedge. He can't come in. No demon can attack. So remember, this teaching tonight is important because it's, it's one of the greatest works of deliverance. Okay? So the testimony we make, it's, as I said, is from our lips. It's like that's very hyssop. Okay? It transfers the power of the blood of Jesus from the realm of the potential into our daily living. Okay? So remember this testimony. Praise God. Praise God. One more. One more important thing that we need to understand through the blood of Jesus is the cleansing part. Okay. Now this is again important. We are going to cleanse ourselves totally with the blood of Jesus and we'll have a deliverance prayer at the end. So when we go tonight, after tonight, we have to know any time where we feel there's an area of our life, if it could be our own spouse who's got into an, uh, maybe an addiction, okay, of drinking, smoking, gambling, or doing something wrong or watching something and you can do nothing, take the blood of Jesus. And say, this is that very precious. Hold it in your hand and close your eyes and cry out to God and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I take the precious blood of Jesus and I sprinkle it over my, my spouse or my children. And let that blood be on that person and Lord, uh, absolve him of all his sin. And all his sins are forgiven because of the blood. And now through the blood of Jesus, Whatever the person's name is, he's redeemed from the hands of Satan. Many times people who have a bad habit of drinking, when you say this prayer, they just lose the taste of the drinking. They wonder what's gone wrong. <laughs> the same alcohol tastes different because the blood of Jesus makes that alcohol taste like water. You know, there's no fun anymore in that very sin. Because we need to understand Satan's biggest area of attack is making us slave to that sin, making us commit that sin again and again. If we just come out of it, again he puts you back in it. And this is the blood that breaks us. Amen? Amen. So let's understand the cleansing part now of the blood of Jesus. Okay, this is all practical. What we learn here is practical. It's not a theory class, as you all know. If we start living the way we are living, using the word of God, we learn every Friday. We live powerful lives and all glory and praise goes to Jesus, our loving Lord and Savior and to the Holy Spirit and God the Father. Amen. Amen. So let's understand now from 1 John 1, 7, how the cleansing from sin takes place. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Okay, does it say some sin or all sin? From all sin. So this is important for us to understand that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Because Jesus was made a sin offering on our behalf on, the, on that cross. So the devil would never want you to hear this, this talk tonight or this teaching tonight because this is the truth. And the truth, the Lord clearly says, the truth will set you free. So if you know the truth, okay, you will be set free. That's why it's very, very important for us to know the truth. Okay. So if we walk in the light, then the first result is fellowship with one another. Now walking in the light, okay, how do we walk in the light? By adhering to God's word and keeping his commands. Okay, doing what is right in the eyes of God. So, so if we walk in the light, then we'll have fellowship with one another. And the second result is that we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Now, if you notice, there are three verbs in this whole thing. One is walking, having fellowship, and being cleansed. If you read that whole scripture, it says, if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, that's the first one. So walking is the first part. The second one, we have fellowship with one another. Okay, if you see, having fellowship is the second one. And the third party says, uh, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So it's being cleansed. So the three verbs here are walking, having fellowship, and being cleansed. And if you notice, they are in the present tense. Okay, they're continuous present tense. So it just cannot happen once. They must go on continually. So you cannot say that, look, I just put the blood of Jesus on me. It's okay. I can now just, um, you know, be out of this. Remember one thing, the devil waits for an opportunity, for a chance, let the hedge waver down. Because faith is all that matters when you talk about the blood of Jesus. Without faith, you cannot apply 
the hyssop. The hyssop is a testimony. When we testify with our mouth, we are actually taking the blood and applying it over the place where we want to apply it. So our testimony is that hyssop. Are you getting me? Savio, are you understanding? Yes. Okay. So the testimony was physically taking the blood in the basin in the Old Testament and the Israelites were using that hyssop and marking it on their house. The hyssop today is the word of God through our mouth is that hyssop. Okay. So you got that here? Yes. <clears throat> So although we may say that we may claim that the cleansing of the blood of Jesus, okay, we are not uh, meeting all the conditions, okay. But one thing we need to know, if we don't meet all the conditions there, okay, we'll not really be totally cleansed, okay. So the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus cannot redeem us or does not cleanse us in darkness, okay. So you cannot, if God is in the light, in him there's no darkness at all. So he is in the light. He is the light. Okay. So the blood of Jesus does not cleanse in the dark, but only as we walk in the light. This is what the word says. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Okay. Now, do you know one thing? That sin is the only barrier between God and his grace upon us. Grace is by definition, is an unmerited favor of God upon our lives. So the hand of God's favor is upon our life. Do you know, sometimes people say, hey, whatever that man does, Psalms 1-3, whatever he does, he prospers. Because that is the, the hand of God's favor on your life. Now that favor can be blocked by sin. And the devil wants that very favor to be blocked because he does not want any Christian to be rich. He wants poverty. He wants you to be destroyed. He wants to steal, kill and destroy. And he, this biggest weapon he uses all the time is guilt. But he always makes suggestions. What if you are not healed? What if? What if? If is his favorite word. If you are the son of God, say to these stones, become bread. Like then Jesus says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. It is written. Can we make that our prayer as well? It is written. So now we need to walk in the light. So the first test of are we walking in the light? If we are walking in the light, what the word says, we'll always have fellowship with one another. If we are not enjoying fellowship with the fellow believers, okay, and with the Lord, then we are definitely not in the light. And if we are not in the light, the blood of Jesus does not cleanse us. So the cleansing has to be complete and whole. Okay. And you need to walk in the light. Now, I was just, when I'm, I'm doing a topic called demonology, someday I'm going to teach this. But what I understand from entire the Antichrist and Satan's church and the way he operates, everything who works in that church happens in darkness. Okay, everything is in darkness. Everything is secret. Nothing is revealed. So the devil is always secretive, does not want anything to be in the light. That's why darkness is where he operates out of. All the sin takes place in darkness, but all the truth is in the light. That's why Jesus says, if we walk in the light, okay, light means you're open, transparent, you're clear about what you have. There's nothing to hide inside you. That's when you are in the light. Okay. Otherwise, if you're hiding something, there's the devil has held you, bound you somewhere. They can't be complete cleansing. You need to be open because everything belongs to God. Okay. Many times you realize one thing, we are spirit, okay? And when we are born again of the Holy Spirit, our flesh is to be put to death on the cross, nailed to death on the cross. So you could say I've died a hundred deaths all the time because now I'm spirit. I worship my God in spirit and truth. That's why John 4, 24 says, true worshipers will worship God in spirit and truth because you are spirit. Every time the devil tells you your flesh, these are your needs, the flesh is never satisfied. You give the flesh something once more, once more. So there's nothing that you can give the flesh to satisfy the flesh. But the spirit can only be satisfied with the word of God. And that's why a spirit has to take control over the soul and the body. Amen. Amen. So the next question here is then, if someone has a question, they'll always ask is, how do we walk in the light? Okay. And for that, we need to understand the word of God it helps us to walk in the light. And that's why the word of God is very important. Let's read Psalm 119 verse 105. 
So there are two conditions, walking in the light and having fellowship with one another. Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Okay, so the word of God is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. So this is the first condition of walking in the light. So it clearly says, how do I walk in the light? Because the word itself is a lamp to my feet. It means a word gives me a direction, shows me the right direction. That's why people say, do we need to read the word of God? Is it important? I can live a happy life. I am a holy person. I go to church. I pray. I pray all the prayers. I'm holy. Why should I need to read the Bible? But here the word says, your word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It gives me a direction and a light to my path. And what the Lord says, unless and until you are in the light and unless and until you have fellowship with one another, they can't be cleansing through the blood of Jesus. So the second one is, uh, is the second one is that we should have fellowship with one another. Take me to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. Now, very important here, speaking the truth in love. Now, remember the Lord clearly said, if you are in the light, how do I become, how do I, how do I, act, how do I get into the light? By speaking the truth in love. Now, remember you have to operate out of love. There's nothing hidden in your heart. You're open and transparent. You are in the light. If there is something you're hiding, you don't want to share with someone else, be it your own spouse or be it someone and you're hiding something, there is some area where the devil is held holding your bondage. This is something that you can directly see your own life and understand. What the Lord is saying, if you speak the truth in love and may grow up in all things into him who is the head, that is Christ. Okay, So let's understand, in this passage, it clearly says, walking in the light is defined as relating to our fellow believers in truth and in love. Now, remember, we must be willing to act out in the truth in our own relationships with one another. And we have to do that in love. Now, I just give you an example. If husband and wife are open to each other in every aspect of their life, they are transparent about everything. Okay. Will that marriage be blessed? Savio? Yes. Because you're communicating everything out of love. Because love is the very backbone of that marriage. And Christ is love. So if you have Christ in your life, in every relationship, be it with your boss, be it with your colleague, be it with your children, your parents, every person in your life, be it with your own self, if Christ is in your life, then you are going to act in love and there'll be nothing hidden because the Lord knows everything. Even before thought is in your mind, the Lord knows it. That's what Psalm 139 says. Even before I think, Lord, you know what I'm thinking. Where can I run from you, Lord? I can cheat the world, Lord, but I can't cheat you. So let's be open and transparent to the Lord with what we are doing. Let him know everything. Okay? So walking in the light consists of two things that we put in practice. Okay? First one is obedience to God's word. That's why it's so important. People say, do I really need to read the Bible? Do I really need to open this Bible and read? Is it so important? You, the first very condition of this very, uh, you know, walking is in the light is obedience to God's word. If you do not know God's word, what are you going to be obedient to? Okay, that's the first thing. Uh, and the second one it says is, you know, so first one is walking in the obedience to the word of God. And the second one is walking in truth and love with our fellow believers. So when we meet these two conditions, we can say that we have full assurance that the blood of Jesus is cleansing us from all sin. So beautiful. First thing is walking in the light. And second one is walking in truth and love. In your life, there'll only be truth. You don't lie. There's nothing to be hidden. Okay, there's nothing hidden. The Lord knows everything. When you are one with Christ, 
there's nothing to hide you tell god your sin like how you talk to another person you talk to the lord you speak to jesus and say jesus this is what i have done wrong today i have committed this sin lord you know me we all are sinners but it's our very attitude of love when we go to the lord with confidence because he forgives sins the devil does not want us to go into the light he wants us to be in darkness and hide that sin from god okay remember when adam and eve ate the you know the fruit from the tree of of knowledge and when god comes for his normal time he came at that appointed time and say adam where are you he says uh, you know go away from you, me you know and and you know suddenly he realizes he's naked now the question here is suddenly there's a guilt feeling that's how the devil traps through guilt makes him eat the fruit and then says you're naked then you know this is how he operates but if you go to if adam i'm just thinking aloud this is my opinion if if adam had to go to god and said lord i made a mistake this is what i did please forgive me but he never said forgiveness he said she told me to eat it and she says the devil told me to eat it okay what we need to do is not blame anyone go to god straight away to jesus and say jesus we sang that him today why did i sang that him is that what a friend we have in jesus all our sins he bears can we go to him confidently and say jesus i love you these are my sins of today i have done this i have done this i have done this i have done this i ask for your forgiveness i ask for your mercy and you love a beautiful sleep in the night with no any problem you know the lord has taken the sins wiped them away you know he says even if your sins are as red okay as scarlet red i'll make them white as snow so there's nothing it's just erased from that book of life okay there's no sin so can we have that habit of walking in the light today's entire teaching is about walking in the light okay so one thing is that we have to understand is we are very conscious of the physical pollution of the atmosphere around us but remember one thing there's a spiritual pollution as well by sin corruption and ungodliness in order to be kept clean we need the continual cleansing of the blood of jesus it is not a one time process it's a process that takes place all the time we need to be cleansed remember the holy spirit lives in us and holy spirit is holy we cannot just remain uh, you know saying no i did it because that's the devil saying you did it why you have to do it again cleansing takes place all the time okay so we show that we meet the conditions of cleansing okay and uh, let our testimony be this today for this very cleansing can you repeat after me savio do not unmute but others can repeat as i walk in the light as i walk in the light the blood of jesus the blood of jesus is cleansing me is cleansing me from all sin from all sin now now and continually and continually we thank you jesus we thank you jesus we praise you jesus we praise you jesus and we love you jesus we love you jesus okay now see if we believe this testimony okay remember we started by this uh, revelation 12 11 the whole topic is about the confession and your testimony the testimony is testifying what the word of god says what the blood of jesus has done you testify with your testimony so the hisop is your testimony that is the power of transferring the blood from the spirit realm into your actual daily living okay and no evil can come near you amen amen okay so if you believe that we keep thanking god and we thank him all the time and we feel you feel totally feel totally pure and clean in all the ways okay now another provision of uh, the blood of jesus is made and it's very very clear in romans chapter 5 verse 8 and 9 can you read romans chapter 5 verse 8 and 9 but god demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners christ died for us much more than having now been justified by his blood 
we shall be saved from wrath through him god's wrath through him okay now uh, is that niv uh, savio this is uh, king james uh, new king james can you take me to niv for this one please let's hold on to niv till the end okay. just have got sure. Uh, eight and nine, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this: while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by His blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath? through him this is so important but god demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners christ died for us when we are still sinners he died for us okay since we have been justified by his blood you know what's the meaning of justified made right yes exactly so made right to make to make be made right yes okay so the very 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 phrase here is to be justified by his blood how much more shall we be saved from god's wrath through him so the key phrase here is justification now justification as you said is to be made righteous to acquit it from sin you are no more a sinner and you have no guilt in you guiltless okay so the best uh, best area of justification is if you know the word justified if you just break it down as just as if i had never sinned just as if i had never sinned okay because we are justified through the blood of jesus we receive the righteousness of jesus christ and not only our own righteousness the 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 righteousness of christ because christ never sinned okay so remember one thing the the word of god says that seek me me and my righteousness and everything else shall be added unto you this is the righteousness of christ the righteousness of christ is to be justified through christ when you go to the father you know i just want to let all of us know today we can approach god the father with boldness and i tell you whatever prayer you make to the father in heaven will be heard when you pray to the clean heart say father in heaven i come to you boldly with confidence in the name of jesus my loving lord and savior and then make your request known to the father in heaven and cry out to him just like a child and say lord this is what i'm praying for i've been stuck in this situation and i know lord when i come to you you hear my prayer okay you hear my prayer and state say this because when i come to you i know confidently when i come to you every time you hear my prayer and and i have an answered prayer so i come boldly with confidence to you because who do i go to father i have only you and i know i serve the living god so when you come confidently in the name of jesus you are just justified by the blood as if you never sinned you know and you just go in straight into the holy of holies and make that prayer and you will see this answered prayer in your life this prayer is a prayer from the heart amen i'm just showing you us how we can use this to walk into our life the devil does not want us to know this this is the truth that we can walk into the holy of holies through christ because we are justified okay we are made righteous and made whole okay <clears throat> so let's understand this now you may be having some areas or questions in this let's clear it all out now with the scripture 2 corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 so you know we, the lord says sir seek me seek me and my righteousness seek me my kingdom and my righteousness and what is the righteousness of christ and all things shall be added unto you so just read, let's let's understand 2 corinthians 5:21 god made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of god so in him we are the righteousness of god so when you go to the father in heaven now i just want us to know we have got a secret today a secret that the lord has taught us that we can come boldly to the boldly and confidently to the father in heaven and tell heavenly father in the name of jesus the moment you say in the name of jesus you are made righteous with christ as if you had no sin 
we just walk in the holy of holies if we had to actually go through a teaching in exodus and understand what it took to go into the holy of holies there was a priest who was a high priest who was tied with bells and had a rope tied on him and when he went to the holy of holies okay there was no surety that he would come back if, because if he had any sin in him he would die that's what it was mentioned and and you know why the bells were there because if he was alive he moves the bells will make noise and if the bells stop ringing for some reason they know that he has died they would put a rope and tie him if he was tied with a rope because nobody wanted to go in because they would die so that was how it was to go to the holy of holies today the good news what god is says god made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of god so we walk into the holy of holies freely as if we had no sin at all we just go straight to god and what god says okay i made you righteous who are you coming through jesus okay you're righteous come in ask me what you want and he said this is my prayer and you know at the end of the day when you pray say thank you lord because i know when i come to you my prayer is heard have that confidence of having that relationship with abba father through jesus let's have that relationship with jesus because jesus christ is that savior that gives us the access to the holy of holies we can go to the father in heaven and say heavenly father abba father and say in the name of jesus the moment you say that you become righteous and the lord says yes come in son and then you make your petition known to the lord remember to praise and thank the father in heaven because that's what he likes praise him because you praise and glorify god you know we get into the holy of holies and you know the most beautiful thing in heaven is when you read the scripture you realize the angels are rejoicing there is happiness there is joy there is only hallelujah praising hosanna hosanna in the highest there is only happiness and hosanna there's there's a praising of god all the time it's such a beautiful atmosphere of praise and thanksgiving all the time that's why god expects us who he created in his own image and likeness to praise him and glorify him all the time so let's understand from today's teaching that i can go to the father now to the holy of holies through jesus because i'm made righteous i become the righteousness of god and he says yes you have got the entry you got a passport your passport is christ to walk into the holy of holies and you know what you're straight with the father and the father answers prayers when it's made through jesus christ what a beautiful thing for us to know and let's use this and see our life change because now we not only have a relationship with our loving lord and savior jesus who's our very passport but we now get to know the father and he says if you know me know the father and when we pray to the father remember pray with confidence how jesus prayed and say father in heaven i know you answer my prayer that's why i come to you and i have this area of my life which i need to pray for and i know you will give me an answer and you will speak to me and give me an answer and i know that so the lord will speak to you in a dream he'll speak to you in a vision there will be some area of your life he will ensure that he speaks to you but remember god loves us so much that he sacrificed his son for us in the cross the last drop of blood was that blood that makes us righteous the righteousness of god amen okay amen amen so this this very understanding here is remember there was an exchange that took place on the cross jesus became sin with our sinfulness assume the penalty and the judgment of sin was borne by jesus he has already paid that price that's why he said it is finished now to understand what happened this is the truth so the truth is he paid the full price of redemption by shedding his own blood okay now once he shed his own blood on that cross we become the righteousness of god not our righteousness not any kind of human righteousness but the very righteousness of god himself the righteousness of god is because of jesus christ's blood on that cross that why the blood of the lamb is our gateway or the entry pass to go into the holy of holies with confidence to our loving god the father through our savior jesus christ so god has never known sin so there has always been a righteousness through we receive that through the faith in the blood of jesus so through the blood of jesus then i am justified made righteous with god as i told you justified is just as if i had never sinned 
that's the meaning of justification this then is the answer to satan's accusation against us because he accuses us all the time because he wants us to prove us guilty he goes and keeps on accusing us that's what you read in job chapter 1 verse 9 how he makes the accusation and then then he says but you put a hedge around job how can i touch him the blood of jesus is that hedge he say i can't touch him okay therefore the primary testimony over satan's accusation and this is our testimony so you repeat after me through the blood of jesus through the blood of jesus i am justified i am justified made righteous made righteous just as just as if i had never sinned as if i have never sinned amen amen okay so for that reason i can stand before god without shame or fear this is the beauty of this teaching i can go to the father in heaven without any shame or fear because what the what satan tells us you are not holy how can you go to the father in heaven you are not holy but this is the teaching that teaches you that the blood of jesus is my gateway he says you cannot go to the father except through me but we didn't understand how to go through the father become become because we become the righteousness of god this is what he says and that's why we can go boldly to the father in heaven and says uh it's in vain satan to accuse me because i'm not meeting you you know in my righteousness when the devil comes and says hey but you're not righteous but remember one thing i'm not righteous in person i'm righteousness because of god and without sin and without stain and this is what happens so so a holy person is someone who is set apart to god and god makes you holy and he sanctifies you so now let's understand one more part which is sanctification and and how do we get into the continuous plea and then we close in prayer okay let's get to understanding one more uh, scripture this is hebrews 13:12 how the blood of jesus sanctifies us we'll make that very confession as well and so jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own blood okay now very very important we understand he was crucified outside the city to sanctify the people through his own blood now if you notice the use of the blood for sanctification is clear in the passover okay now the blood of the passover lamb okay which set israel apart to god is mentioned in exodus now let's understand this very very important scripture the blood of jesus okay and the blood of the lamb back then how it was used and how the hisab today gets used as our testimony okay very very important uh, if you are paying attention this is the most important part of our teaching do not leave at this time if the if satan wants you to leave he would want you to leave now because this is where the power is the most okay let's go to the book of exodus chapter 11 verse 4 to 7 pay full attention this is what the blood did so moses said this is what the lord says about midnight i will go throughout egypt every first born son in egypt will die from the first born son of pharaoh who sits on the throne to the first born son of the female slave who is at a handmill and all the first born of the cattle as well there will be a loud wail throughout egypt worse than has ever been or ever will be again but among the israelites not a dog will bark at any person or animal then you will know that the lord makes a distinction between egypt and israel okay this is so important let's understand this okay and then let's make a confession on this 
very uh, testify on this area i've used testimonies in every aspect of our life so that we have a complete testimony to the lord and we are made righteous at this end of this teaching but remember it's a continuous process it's not just a one day offer it has to be done all the time now the lord made a distinction between those who were his people and those who were not his people wrath and judgment came upon those who were not god's people but god's people were so totally protected remember this is what we need to know the protection the devil and his evil cannot touch you god always wanted to make us prosperous if you need if you read about abraham they were always rich god always gave them that's why we did tithing last last friday people who did tithing we are always in abundance god always wanted to overflow us always want us to give us more than what we need sin stopped that very that became a barrier of god's grace coming from heaven to us and we become righteous when we go back to the blood of jesus because the blood of jesus is what redeems us from sin now we'll remember that the blood of jesus is alive all the time and it is jesus who goes up and justifies us with before god the father and that's why from tonight when we make our prayer let's go boldly to the holy of holies and say heavenly father in the name of jesus and you know you're justified just as if you had never ever committed any sin that's the meaning of justification and make your needs known go confidently and have answered prayer all the time and this is what jesus said when you ask the father in my name he will grant it unto you but you can't go to the father unless you understand what jesus did for you so this teaching opens up that very thing okay so the basis of the distinction the separation was the blood of the passover lamb any home that had the blood on the outside was sanctified or set apart to god no evil power could invade that home because the lord had made a distinction between his people and those who are not his people the distinction was made by the applied blood of the lamb so in the same way we have applied the other provisions of jesus's blood by giving our testimony and so we can now get the sanctification by making this testimony okay so we repeat after me through the blood of jesus through the blood of jesus i am sanctified i am sanctified made holy made holy set apart to god set apart to god the devil has no place in me the devil has no place in me no power over me no power over me no unsettled claims against me no unsettled claims over me all has been settled all has been settled by the blood of jesus by the blood of jesus amen amen okay so we have to understand that this is a continuous process so the last part of our teaching now is the continuous process on how do we make our lives holy all the time and let's understand this through hebrews chapter 12 was 22 and 24 is a very important teaching if there was someone who missed it please share this teaching with someone bless someone's life because they can know that we can confidently go into the holy of holies with our passport which is jesus because of his justification yeah go ahead sir but you have come to mount zion to the city of the living god the heavenly jerusalem you have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly to the church of the first born whose names are written in heaven you have come to god the judge of all to the spirits of the righteous made perfect to jesus the mediator of a new covenant and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of abel okay let's understand this okay this is very important so jesus the mediator of a new covenant he is the mediator of the covenant he stands between man and god okay and many times we never understood that we could go to god the father with confidence because we always thought we are sinners and that's how the devil puts us 
he makes us as if we are nothing that we can't go to the father in heaven because he's the holy of holies and he tells you how can you go to the holy of holies when you have so much sin but jesus christ and his blood has justified us and we walk in confidently now to the father in heaven because the father says i love you i sent jesus to pay the price for you and now you go and make your needs and now your prayer life changes all the time because you see answered prayer you're going to the father straight away through jesus amen so that's the truth and that's what we learn and apply in our daily life so let's get this to this part so in the heavenly mount zion okay the blood of jesus was sprinkled in the holy of holies before the very presence of god and this was done on our behalf okay so he entered there as our forerunner having obtained eternal redemption through his sacrifice and he sprinkled that evidence of that redemption in the very presence of almighty god the father so we should note a very important part here now cain murdered his brother abel okay when he tried to disclaim responsibility he said the lord challenged cain and said there is no way you can conceal your guilt because the blood of your brother that you shed on this earth is crying out to me for vengeance this is there in the book of genesis chapter 410 we don't have to go through that but in contrast now we'll understand the verse 24 what the blood of jesus did the blood of blood of jesus is a continuous plea in the very presence of god for his mercy okay so it asks for god for his mercy all the time so once we have testified personally to the power of the blood of jesus we do not have to repeat those words every few minutes because the blood of jesus is speaking to us speaking all the time on our behalf remember jesus is the mediator can you see that verse 24 to jesus the mediator of our new covenant okay mediator means he speaks on our behalf like all the time okay uh the blood of jesus is speaking all the time on our behalf in the very presence of god every time we are troubled tempted fearful or anxious we should remind ourselves and this is what we need to remind ourselves so you repeat after me the blood of jesus the blood of jesus in god's presence in god's presence is speaking on my behalf right now is speaking on my behalf right now amen amen so in our fight against satan which is very important we must move out actively in faith and this is very important to attack not be on the defensive and say what will i do how will i attack you are a warrior and we are warriors of christ and christ paid that price satan is a defeated foe how can we go to the defeated foe and he tells us you have no power it's the blood of jesus and do you know we are got that blood and we all have that power with us so tonight's teaching will teach us that satan is defeated forever he has no power the only power is the power you and i give him by him allow him to come into our mind through the thoughts but he hates the blood of jesus he hates the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony is so important because that is the hisab that puts that very evil away from because that's that very hedge that is there against everything so please put the hisab the word of the testimony of what the word has done for you on your life all the time and that is the that very justification so the blood of jesus if you notice so jesus has supplied us with the weapons of his blood okay so the weapons are the weapons of his blood the blood of jesus the moment you say the word blood of jesus the devil shiver they just can't take that word because that is what destroyed them you reminding them of what happened on the cross and that is something that they hate so if you tell the word the blood of jesus okay just before <clears throat> when i was with brother johnson i was one of his first disciples okay and when we used to go to cast out demons from people okay the first thing brothers to ask them is to say i eat your body and drink your blood and i would say the people who had a demon in them couldn't say these words when they say i eat your body but the moment the blood they couldn't use the word blood on their mouth the blood of jesus because the demon cannot take that that is the very purpose that is the only thing that destroyed him and i could see in front of my eyes that they couldn't use that word blood of jesus but the moment there's a deliverance he says i eat your body and drink your blood jesus and if you can say that with confidence you know that christ is in you i'm just giving you that power of how 
you know, you can get grace upon grace and the favor of God in your life all the time when you have the blood of Jesus with you. So the weapons that we have learned today, the weapons are the blood of Jesus, the word of God, and our testimony, which is the hyssop of what the word of God says about the blood of Jesus. And our personal testimony is the key to employing the other two weapons. Okay. So the two weapons are the blood of Jesus and the word of God. So the blood of Jesus has made provision as we discussed now and we've learned for the redemption, forgiveness, cleansing, justification, sanctification, and intercession on our behalf. So by testifying personally to what the blood of God says about Jesus, Jesus' blood, we can apply these provisions to our lives. In this way, Satan is deprived of his primary weapon against us and his biggest weapon, which is guilt. And we have enabled to live in victory, Christ, the, the life that Christ accomplished for us long time ago on that cross. Amen. Okay. Let's say a prayer of deliverance now. And uh, if you have any illness, we're going with the blood of Jesus. So we are going to get a lot of healing tonight. Okay. Now, I, Savio, repeat this after me. Now, if there's any illness in your life, take that name of the illness. Okay. And just if you're praying for somebody, okay, if someone is in your prayer, it could be a spouse, it could be a brother, someone into bondage, you could make this prayer there as well. Okay. And uh, what I'll also do is I have got this in a word format. So I will also send this on the group after this prayer so that you can make this prayer for anyone all the time. It's the blood of Jesus prayer. It's a very powerful prayer, a prayer of rebuking and evil. Okay. So I want all of us to be powerful so that when we attend this kind of prayer meeting, our lives only should not be blessed, but we should be a blessing to others in our lives. Not just our lives, but our whole families, our whole, our whole sheepfold gets blessed. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's say this. Uh, Savio, just repeat after me. And if there's an illness, please take the name of the illness or sickness you have. When I say illness or sickness, just we'll reject it and take it out right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I take a stand. I take a stand. Rejecting. Rejecting. Name the illness you have now. What are the illness? And I command it. And I command it. To leave. To leave. The name of the person. It could be yourself. Or it could be the person you're praying for. Okay. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You, illness, name the illness. You have no rightful claim on this person. You have no rightful claim on this person. This person is the temple of the Holy Ghost. This person is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And this person is the servant of the Most High God. And this person is the servant of the Most High God. I command you this infirmity. I command you this infirmity. You. You. Name of the illness. Take it. Name of the illness, sickness or disease. Take it right now. Leave this body right now. Leave this body right now. I rebuke the devil and every spirit of infirmity. I rebuke the devil and every spirit of infirmity. You sickness, name the sickness. Get out of this body right now. Get out of this body right now. Be uprooted from the root in the mighty name of Jesus. Be uprooted from the root in the mighty name of Jesus. I take authority over you and command you to leave this body right now. I take authority over you and I command you to leave this body right now. Leave right now by the stripes of Jesus. Leave right now by the stripes of Jesus. Now, my, my friend, name the person who is the person you are praying for. It could be you or anyone. You are healed and you are made whole. You are healed. And you are you now are, made you whole. whole. Lord, you said. Lord, you said. The thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. The thief comes to steal, 
kill and destroy. I rebuke these thieves, robbers who have come to steal your life. I rebuke these thieves and robbers who have come to steal your life. Your health. Your health. Your time and energy. Your time and energy. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind you in the name of Jesus. And command you to leave this person right now. And command you to leave this person right now. Get out of the body. Get out of the body. Get out of the mind right now. Get out of the mind right now. Get out of this home. Get out of this home. Get out of this person's life right now. Get out of this person's life right now. Lord, the word of God prevails. Lord, the word of God prevails. Lord, the word of God says. Lord, the word of God says. You forgive all my sins and heal all my diseases. You forgive all my sins and heal all my diseases. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That you have redeemed this person. Name of the person. That you have redeemed this person. From death. From death. And you have crowned the person's name. And you have crowned. With loving kindness and tender mercies. With loving kindness and tender mercies. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, thank you for satisfying all the desires and filling the name of the person. Thank you for satisfying and filling all the desires. Satisfying all the desires and filling. Satisfying all the desires and filling. The name of the person. Life with all good things. Life with all good things. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That this person, that this person, is strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit, is strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit, and his or her spirit, and his or her spirit, is renewed like that of an eagle. Is renewed like that of an eagle. Father, thank you that in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you that in the name of Jesus. This person, this person is healed and made whole by the word of God. Is healed and made whole by the word of God. Father, you are the most high God. Father, you are the most high God. And devil, you must bend the knee. And devil, you must bend the knee. So that in the name of Jesus. So that in the name of Jesus. All sicknesses, illness and disease. All sicknesses, illness and disease. The reports that you were against. Reports that you were against. In the name of Jesus, be destroyed and get out. In the name of Jesus, be destroyed and get out. And Lord, your favor has come upon this person. And Lord, your favor has come upon this person. And all reports and diagnoses have changed right now. And all reports and diagnoses have changed right now. And devil, you have no authority over this person. And devil, you have no authority over this person. Or unsettled claims against this person. Or unsettled claims against this person. Because everything has been settled by the cross. For everything has been settled by the cross. And the stripes and the blood of Jesus. And the stripes and the blood of Jesus. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. You cannot have this person. You cannot have this person. Name of the person. This person belongs to Christ. This person belongs to Christ. He or she is the servant of the Most High God. He or she is the servant of the Most High God. I reject every lie. I reject every lie. 
and every attack of the devil and every attack of the devil no weapon formed against this person shall prosper no weapon formed against this person shall prosper in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus i demand his or health i demand his or her health back i demand his or her health back i demand the peace joy the time the energy i demand the peace the joy the time the energy and all the money all the money that was stolen by the enemy and all the money that was stolen by the enemy i demand it back in the name of jesus i demand it back in the name of jesus i rebuke you you devourer i rebuke you you devourer and you the person's name you are healed in and jesus you, name are healed in jesus healed in jesus name thank you jesus thank you jesus praise you jesus praise you jesus hallelujah 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 we make this prayer in jesus mighty name we make this prayer in jesus mighty name amen amen okay this prayer i'm going to be sending on our whatsapp group please say this prayer especially for people in covid in the last stage you will have to rebuke that evil out of them say this one with a very very powerful prayer name the person you can pray it over yourself this is something that is written down it's in a word format please share it with anyone you'd like to share it please share this teaching with everyone i hope everyone's life is blessed let's go to the father in heaven tonight and go confidently because we are justified through the blood of jesus and let's remember the main teaching today in revelation 12:11 we they overcame satan by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony okay so remember the testimony is the hisop that that uses the blood on every area of our life let's be confident and live a life of a warrior thank you very much good night and god bless all of you and let's have testimonies on our group okay thank you very much good night good night brother thank, thank you. you thank you brother